Hey, Lions fans, welcome back to the Coach's Show. Uh, we're here with men's basketball coach Drew Stutz. And, uh, Coach, having a great season so far. Uh, what do you think is the number one thing that's contributed to success, the, the thing you're most happy with about this team? Uh, somebody asked me that recently, and I, I sat there and thought about it for a few minutes. And, you know, I really don't, don't know that there's one thing I can put my finger on as far as just like, man, that is the thing that makes the difference. I just think it's kind of been – one of those things that's just been building over the course of time. Uh, obviously, our defense this year is something that we rely heavily on at times, but very efficient offense. Um, got a very balanced team. We're playing 10 guys. So, you know, I really just feel like it's just been a year after year after year process. It's kind of built to where we're at now, where guys have an understanding of what we're trying to do offensively, defensively. We've got good team chemistry, good relationships on the team, and uh, some good experience last year. So <clears throat> you put all those things together, you know, it, you're hoping it's going to result in a good season. <laughs> yeah. Well, you've been on a really good run. I mean, we uh, bring up bad things. We lost to Wilberforce last year, <clears throat> right around this time. Yeah. And we're like 28 and 5 since then. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah, it's been good. I mean, we, we um, again, it's just getting the right guys and then buying into what we're doing right yeah. now. Um, it's not anything specific. We, we don't have a superstar player. We, it wasn't we something just that just clicked team. in that Wilberforce no. game. You can put your finger on it. No. Just, all right. What about um, how you guys stay focused and hungry? Because, you know, basketball is a weird sport, right? Like all the success in the regular season can end real fast if you're not ready for the postseason. So how do you guys keep your guys hungry and focused? Yeah, I mean, I think it's just what you, what you hold them to every day, just accountability as far as how you go about your business day to day and practice and film in the weight room and individual work. Um, you know, the process should always look the same whether you're having success or failure. And that's it's easy to say. It's hard <laughs> to do. Um, you know, sometimes success is the hardest thing to handle because, you, you know, you start feeling like you've, you've arrived or you've done something special. But, you know, it kind of goes with one of our little mottos. We talk about elite is earned. Mm -hmm. And so that's one of the things we refer back to. It's not something that you own. It's something that you earn throughout the course of the year and, and the work that you're putting in on a daily and weekly basis. Um, so really, we, we just try to stay humble and just try to take it one day at a time and just focus on the next game. Okay. Well, so speaking of the postseason, I know that, you know, obviously we're ranked very high in the top 25, and that matters. Uh, strength of schedule, different things like that matter. But a lot of social media recently about the uh, ARC rankings um, in the NAIA, so explain that for everybody just a little bit if you can. Yeah, so you've got different criteria that uh, NAI are going to look at at the end of the year to set up the national tournament bracket, and one of those is the ARC. The ARC is just a regional ranking, so okay. it's, it's a grouping of three or four different conferences, and uh, the I guess the rater or the person that's the spokesperson for your conference, they, they all get on a call and they compare strength of schedule and RPI and talk about where teams fit. And at the end of the year, if, if there's, um, I guess, some discrepancy on who should be seated what, referring back to the ARC and seeing where you set up in the ARC can, can help you or hurt you, depending yeah. on where you're at. But uh, the ARC, the RPI, is kind of a um, – um, it's a good word to use here. It's a list of statistics that they use to create a formula that shows your strength. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's something we've been high in as well here recently. So I think right now we sit in a good spot. Our arc is easily the strongest arc in the, in the nation. You've got Grace, who's undefeated. Indiana Wesleyan, who's top five. Of course, us, Cumberland's Kentucky. So, um, you know, I, we were off air and I said this. It was kind of funny. Uh, I think maybe the last ranking we were sixth. But we were fourth in our own arc, yeah. so uh, you know it's just <laughs> Stop, interesting man. how that how that falls into place. But uh, you, all that stuff, I mean, it's fun. It's interesting to look at. But really, when it comes down to it, is you, you're just going to play the teams that you're going to play come national yeah. tournament. So and you're and yeah, like you said, you guys are just focused on winning our conference, doing the best we can there, and then set yourself up right for yeah. hopefully hosting again. What's it looking like for that? Yeah, we'll find out, I think, about two weeks. Um, you know, feel good based on where we're at right now about the potential of hosting again. Uh, obviously, that was a great experience for our university yeah. and yeah. our players. And so hoping that that happens again for us. And, and if so, I'm sure we'll pack it out and it'll be a lot of fun again. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, I want to close with a little game. I saw this on social media, too. Okay. We're going to play Remember the Stat Line. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be terrible at this. Okay, so <clears throat> the game was February 22nd, 2020. Um, Freed Hardeman, 106. Mobap, 77. 
Okay. All right. So who was the leading scorer in this game? I think that was Cortland Martin. Was that was, that, was that Martin. a record breaking? Yes, yeah. yeah. Record so, breaking. He had 41 maybe that game or? Uh, higher. 43. Higher. 46. No. Nope. <laughs> 45, 44. 44. 44. 44 was the record in that game. Um, all right. A little harder here. Who was the leading rebounder? Uh, I'm going to guess Brian Battle. Brian Battle with 10. That's right. That was kind of a weird team. You didn't have yeah. like a big postman that was gobbling yeah. them all up. So. I just remember him. I remember Cortland having a record setting game, but I remember looking at Brian's stat line and being like, man, he, I don't know if he had a triple double, but he was really close to a triple double and played a really good game, yeah. too. Um, so on the Brian Battle thing and his stat line, you said he did well. Uh, who attempted more field goals in that game, Cortland or Brian? Well, Court, Court made a lot of threes. Uh, Brian was a little bit more rim guy, so I'm, I'm going to guess Brian. Uh, no, it was Court. It was, was it? close. Okay. Brian was 23, Court was 24. Okay. So, but I did think that was interesting. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, the other standard question here, who's the leader in assists? I would guess Brian, but I'm unsure. No, Cortland. Cortland, okay. So that was cool. that was interesting too. It was like he scored 44, and no one was passing him the ball. I guess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, you know, he had a couple games the following year where I, I don't know if he broke the the freed record, but he was. I mean, it was it was a crazy game, like 18 assists in a game. Yeah. Uh, I think it was down that Faulkner. So Court was just one of those guys that just made the right play. So if that meant scoring 44, go for it. <laughs> if that meant dishing out 18 assists, that was awesome too. Um, all right, now weird question here, and I'm not trying to call anybody out, but uh, not a, as deep of a team that year okay. as this year. So um, minutes played by Silas Clark. In that game? In that game. <laughs> uh, we'll go with 18 minutes. That was exactly right. Okay. <laughs> was, well, you know we script a lot of things out sometimes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was trying to think through. Where, where was Silas at that year? So I was going to guess around that mark. Um, yeah, you, it was about, I think it was only about six guys played. Okay. Um, and I, I think there were some injuries maybe at we that did. point in the season. Yeah. It, yeah. it was later February there. but. Um, I was pretty close. That wasn't bad. That was that was really bad. good. Yeah. I don't know uh, if we play with some other people. I'm not sure how they'll do. But um, all right. Well, that's uh, that's all we've got for today. Um, I really appreciate your time, Coach yeah. Stutz, and uh, we'll be back um, with another coaches show. If you're looking for more information on FHU athletics, you can go to our website, gofhulions.com, or you can follow all of our social media accounts at GoFHULions on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. If you want more information about the Director Circle or linebackers, there's a link in the description below. Uh, and there's also a video with more information that should appear on your screen right here. Thank you so much for watching today. Go Lions!